suppose you make things around the shop more than you make them, um, you know, out and about or in the field. And uh, you buy screwdriver bits for your projects. And they come in those little plastic, difficult to use uh, little plastic boxes. And they don't quite organize the bits. And then you lose a couple or a couple get dull as they get dull because they're consumable. And then you've got like different boxes of bits kicking around and um, everything becomes unmanageable. So you end up putting them into whatever container possible. Then everything's sort of into an unmanageable mess like this then you have naughty bits and um, I've got a little project to, to help you organize it. If you have your own shop basically if you're not moving around there's no reason why you should have to put up with those little ridiculously hard to use little plastic containers the bits come in especially as your bit collection grows and uh, you may be asking yourself well Brenda you just took a piece of wood or two pieces of wood and you put a bunch of holes in it and and I could do that well good so these are the bit holders so basically they're just blocks of wood with holes in it and um, uh, you can see the the holes are countersunk and uh, I put some finish on it this wood ironically is Hindoris mahogany and um, I had rescued a whole bunch of this wood from the side of the road and I processed it cutting it into pieces that are as, as large as they could be and, and um, these were um, the smallest leftovers. And, um, but, um, you, you know, I like using reclaimed wood. And this was great reclaimed wood. This is a great find. Um, and um, it doesn't have to be this. I mean, you could make these out of, like, MDF would be good. Uh, particle board would not be good for this because the corners would chip off. But MDF would be decent. And plywood would be good. Um uh, especially like cabinet grade wood and scraps of cabinet grade wood glued together is even better and um, um, generally and, you, and I find a lot of wood on the side of the road you um, sometimes even of the bureau or something like that might be made out of uh, uh, even particle board sometimes in the drawers the side of the drawers they'll have like you know a half inch of um, hardwood and um, and you could glue it and laminate it together. Um, for this, it worked out pretty good. This is about an inch thick, about 25 millimeters. And, um, and these holes, the small ones, are 3 sixteenths of an inch. And um, the larger ones are 964. And uh, they're countersunk somewhat. I rounded the corners. I didn't fuss on the bottoms and stuff. You can see I still have some of the original finish that was on this. And these are going to be in the bottom of my toolbox. And... Um, yeah, so, um, well, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, you know, I like this is how do I get all the arrays of the holes like this? And um, I so I'm going to post the templates and you can print out the templates. And if these temp particular templates don't work out for you, then um, you could get a program, a CAD program such as uh, FreeCAD 3D or even use Inkscape um, or even Photoshop or what have you, whatever tool you're comfortable with and just lay down some dots and copy them around and, and, and make the thing. And uh, oddly, th these are, are, I made them this size because um, um, th this fits into my toolbox nice. And I have some other uh, storage boxes that are about this size. You may be wondering why I didn't 3D print them because this is cheaper and this is pretty nice too. You know, this is real wood. Look at this, look at the green. I made this template to hold a bunch of smaller bits and larger bits because the, the bits get kind of big and stuff. Like here's one, here's another. This seems to be the biggest size. And I wanted to be able to pick the bits out. But a lot of bits are just screwdriver size like this. I don't really have any additional width to them. So I came up with this drawing. So to, I'm going to both tape and glue stick my uh, template. I got some glue stick. And uh, just in case, uh, and I'm just going to line it up with the edges. I don't know how well any of this thing is going to stick onto this, but just in case I've got some tape. I don't know how well this is going to stick on the edge of this, but there's always that hope. And I'm using an automatic center punch, and these aren't that expensive right now. And if you don't have an automatic center punch, you could use an awl and a hammer or a nail and a hammer and stuff. And uh, 
I have, because there's so many of them that do, I'm going to wear hearing protection because I don't want to listen to this because I'm a bit of a musician uh, at times. And uh, just sit here and, uh, and uh, basically I use one finger to guide the uh, punch. Like so. Well, and you get the idea. I had problems with my Harbor Freight uh, on Meg Center Punch. I'm probably going to replace it with an American one. And uh, notwithstanding, I'm going to pull up the template and see what I have. Maybe I can get two uses out of this. I don't know. We'll see. See, the glue stick is still holding. Actually, the glue held up pretty well. Well, at least the template didn't slip, but... These are SAE or US customary size bits, and I'm just using the drill index to, to judge a bit. And, and it looks like obviously one quarter inch isn't going to go, so it looks like 932 might. So I'm going to get the depth not too far down because I want a little bit of strength, but I don't want it to wobble very much either. I got some glasses. Protect my eyes. Now I want to see how uh, clean the hole is. Actually, it looks pretty good. I don't think I'll have to center drill these in this one case. I'm going to countersink them a little bit too. So uh, so I think I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to see how the bit fits in there. And it fits in there pretty nice. That's going to be nice. It's actually an yeah, interference fit, but uh, they'll break it. Now it's the exciting process of drilling the holes. I'll try one first and see how it goes. Always wait for it to stop completely. That should be pretty nice. With such a repetitive operation such as this, there's plenty of chances to hurt yourself if you become overconfident. Because there's an even number of cutting edges on this bit, it will tend to chatter. And uh, if there were an odd number, and if they were just a little unsymmetrical, it wouldn't chatter so much. That's why the single surface ones work, so, or single edge ones work so well. And I think I got this pretty close. But I'll try this, and I'll just be careful. When I countersunk, I usually try to do it just kind of, uh, kind of quickly. And uh, but I've got to check and make sure this isn't too deep. Well, let's see how this works out. And this has got some wear on it, so let's see how it works. That's not far enough. In a perfect world, I would use the depth stop to judge this, but I think I'm just gonna eye it, and it because. Uh, this wood isn't completely flat, and I don't know what it's going to take to clean up each hole. But uh, it seems that with wood, it seems that it's better to go slowly, whereas metal, it's better to reduce chatter by going quickly. But uh, let me see. Something like that. It looks like that'll work out pretty good. In the end, I did use the depth stop, and um, ultimately, I found that just going slow and letting it reach the depth stop, uh, a lot of the resonances worked themselves out. I wish I had a sharper uh, bit. But... Well, the good news is I have a router. The bad news is the bearing is seized on it, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to put an edge on this using the belt sander. I've got the guard removed. You have to be careful because it's going to want to go to the table or over the end, probably towards the table. And this takes a certain amount of finesse to be able to do this. Let's see how it works out. Uh, bearing in mind, this is just a bit holder. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those projects. I want to get it done. Oddly, that worked out pretty well. And uh, 
yeah, files would work too. And uh, we'll just do a little notch in there, give it a little more. I've got this little sanding block and some 80 grit paper. I'm going to go around the edges and I can get them a little more uniform because you can take your, your strokes nicer. As it is, I'm just sanding is a little bit like so for this project I'm using lacquer you can see I have the paper held down with a rock or something uh, I didn't even bother to take off all the finish because it's just gonna be a workhorse tool I'm doing this in a well ventilated area and I'm wearing a mask Of course, I need another rock or something. So this is how the bits generally look in the board. And I try to put the tall ones in back. And uh, you don't want to create a hazard here. And uh, um, these are basically for, for bench use and for toolbox use. Um, um, I didn't think I had this many of these. Or I thought I had an incomplete set because I thought some were lost. I eventually found them. I got these adapters. Um, I got one of these. This isn't looking so good, but um, and uh, bits are consumable too. So if you buy a set, it's not going to stay a set. And um, like in the case of Phillips, that um, these things wear. Uh, I helped a friend with a deck, and um, I don't do a lot of that kind of work, and it's because my back's not always so good. But um, these things don't last forever, and. Um, um, that's why they use uh, Torx a lot now, and uh, the Torx T25s and stuff like that work pretty good, uh, and save on your back too. Um, for these, I didn't even rearrange these this time. This is just you know to show you how how it looks. I will don't worry. I will um, I will fret over these. Don't you worry about that. Um, but um, also these are heavy. This weighs this weighs over a kilogram. Uh, my little scale would not weigh this. You don't want to sink the bits in too far. And I wanted enough of space to be able to to pick out even the larger things. That's part of the reason why I did this is you can you can you can get your fingers in here to pull out the bit. And uh, you're gonna have to be a little careful pulling out bits, especially the little ones. The little ones are pointy and so so if you jam your hand down there you'll get it right here. So you'll just go and just pick out a bit. And it's better to always go diagonally. If you always go diagonally, you've got a lot of room. If you go this way, not so much. And you have to be careful. These are, you know, these are pointy things. It's, this is a bed of nails. And uh, I just still can't get over the mahogany. And so I throw out that wood. I, I, um, um, I don't like wasting wood. Um, and I guess that, you know, even a pine tree, you know, that's, you know, maybe pine isn't that exotic, but, um, it's still wood and it's still part of a living thing. So I hope this incites you to go out into the shop or garage and make your own bit holders and make ones better than mine. And because uh, I didn't fuss with mine, mine only took like an hour or two. Um, actually, shooting these videos was took longer than actually making the bit holders. Anyway, but um, so if you could s subscribe and um, uh, and watch some videos, I'd like to get this channel monetized again. I I, I really wanted to do this on a regular basis become a na naughty bit naughty <laughs> so funny.